Friday, everyone. Welcome. Uh, continue our journey towards Antarctica, and it's not just penguins, all sorts of creatures living in the, the south polar regions, like this sea otter here. Looks pretty different from the river otters uh, we looked at the other day. And there are humpback whales in the water as well. Uh, rarely do you see the, the whole whale out of the water, just bits and pieces. Most recognizable, of course, is the barnacle encrusted tail. Also have these uh, chonkers here, the fur seals. Uh, a heartwarming story, uh, these these fur seals were hunted almost to extinction, but now have made a, a strong comeback, I guess given that humans find a lot less call for seal fur these days than they used to. Uh, these are big uh, male seals here, and they're, they're looking very, uh, very self-satisfied, and they also uh, are very protective of their spot on the beach. And so if uh, another male comes comes near, the, the seals will uh, get into a bit of disagreement about just whose spot of beach this is, and they'll uh, actually fight and slam into each other and make a lot of noise. But uh, these seals may, may be pretty rowdy, but it doesn't mean that they can't be cute like this uh, baby fur seal here. Uh, and there are, there are other seals as well. Here's a, a Weddell seal uh, and uh, a, a nursing pup. Uh, and don't let the kind of uh, friendly uh, appearance in this picture fool you. Uh, this is the leopard seal, one of the most uh, uh, effective and, and deadly predators uh, among the seal. You, you do not want to be in the water uh, with, with one of these things. All right. Okay. Yeah, it's a quick question. How big are the seals? Like, it's hard to tell in the photo. Hmm. No, it's a tough person. Uh, so, <coughs> see, the seals are a lot bigger. Like a like a penguin would be maybe up to here. Gotcha. And yeah, one of these male seals would so be. Big. Yeah, these are these are quite large large animals, uh, and they uh, will. Um, not only do they like try and chase out other seals, but they'll they'll go they'll like try and fight off people as well. So you want to keep keep your distance, Shoga. Um, did your parents take these? Yes, my parents took all the photos I'm showing you. Where are the yeah. photos taken? Um, so these, um, I mean, so the. A lot of these habitats are on these small islands in the, like, the South Atlantic slash Antarctic Sea. Um, so I'd have to look up the names of the, the small islands, but it's basically between uh, Southern South America, Antarctica is where a lot of this habitat is. All right, questions uh, on uh, the Critter World Lab objects. Uh, Gabe. Yeah, we were like working on the outfit one a little bit, and like we're very stuck on how to make it move in the square. Yes, so uh, <coughs> a key idea from this lab uh, that I'll mention uh, that I think will still make sense even if you have yet to start it, uh, is one of the, the key ideas from this, uh, from this lab is uh, an idea of what I, um, here we are, what I would call an interface, meaning a a set of methods that multiple classes will all implement so that other code can interact with those classes all in the same way. And what you're doing in this lab is 
uh, populating this grid world with various different kinds of critters. Uh, stones, tigers, mice, elephants, and uh, chameleons. And all of these creatures are a class that implement the same set of methods. Like every creature has some way that it fights, every <laughs> creature has a color, every creature is able to move, or in the stone's case, stay in the same place. Every creature has a, a character that represents it. Every creature has the opportunity to do things after a fight is over, though most don't. And so this set of methods, uh, fight, get color, get move, get char, and fight over, would be the interface. A set of methods that all these classes are going to implement, such that the code that's running this critter world can call the same methods on any kind of creature, because they all need to be able to do the same things. So Gabe asked about one of these particular creatures, the elephant, where its movement behavior is to, is to march in a square, is to uh, say if, if this parameter to the constructor is three, then the elephant should go three south, three west, three north, three east, and just kind of march in that square is how it should move. And so we want some way for every time the elephant moves for it to either continue in a particular direction or switch and start moving in another direction. So I actually showed an example of uh, a kind uh, of a code that would uh, would do this. Let me actually just do it in VS Code. When we talked about uh, this cuckoo class that had some number of, of steps, and then every time tick was called, it either ticked one more or if it was kind of, it had gone a certain number of steps, then it printed cuckoo. And so this elephant class needs to do something similar where it has this number of steps and it should also keep track of how many times it has gone in its current direction. And when it has gone a number of times in its current direction equal to the steps, the way that this tick method checks, that's when it should start moving in, in a new direction. So that's uh, uh, the basic idea behind doing this, this elephant. Okay. So how would it, so it says like equal, equal. <coughs> what if it's like at six, let's say like the steps is three, once it gets to six, wouldn't it not be equal even though like that's gonna have to change again? Or how do you get to like restart the count? Well, so that's why oh, it resets sorry, the count yeah, to zero gotcha. uh, each time. <laughs> Uh, and then the <clears throat> uh, and then we also the the one the thing that this elephant does is that every time it needs the steps it needs to change to a particular direction uh, and there are different ways to approach that you could, you could use if statements you could make a list of these of the four directions and uh, come up with a way to to use this the steps as an index into that list there. Are different ways but this kind of steps and then keeping account is is the basic idea other questions on the lab or object stuff in general all right let us do a bit of practice you to look at this class definition and think about why it won't work. All right. Uh, might be haunted. Um, please discuss with your neighbors uh, not only what you think is wrong, but how you would fix what you think is wrong.
Like, how would you correct this definition? All right, I, I checked. There are no ghosts, uh, but there is also also no self. Uh, so, someone help me out with uh, how I would add self to this class definition to to make it work. You might have noticed it's uh, it had different colors than the um, VS Code because VS Code actually gives away that top and bottom are not defined here, which is why this this the problem this definition has. Yeah, Ezra. Well, I mean, I'm on the uh, suggestions right now, but uh, one suggestion is to add self to the parameters in it. Yeah, we always want the first parameter of every method to be self, and so repr will need that as as well. Uh, how would we use self in in our method definitions? Okay. When you do like self dot top, self dot bottom on the left side of the. Absolutely, that we want to take our input top and store it in an instance variable, something associated with the object we're initializing. So we need to tell Python that by having self dot in front of the name of our, our instance variable. Uh, anywhere else that we need to, to use self? Maya? Exactly. That, then anywhere where we mean to refer to one of our instance variables, we still need to have self self dot there. <coughs> Any questions on this? <coughs> All right. Let's do a code writing exercise for uh, get in some some last object practice. So I would like you to write a definition for a date class, like a, a year, month, day, um, and should have instance variables for the year, the month, and the day, and it should have these four methods. A constructor, a representation <laughs> method to turn it into a string, this double underscore eq to test if two dates are equal, and a double underscore gt to test if two one date is greater than the other. And so both eq and gt should return true or false based on whether two dates are equal, whether uh, self is, is uh, a later date, that's how we're defining greater than, uh, for for that, uh, and so Dominic and I will be be wandering around. So take uh, work with your your neighbors to to figure out how you would define this class. So a good a good approach to our our repr method is we want to combine numbers like our year with text with strings like a slash in quotes. And a nice way to do that is to turn our number into a string with the str function and then use plus to concatenate that string with the other parts of the string we want to return. So, make this look like Python, class date. Uh, I know that I want an init self year month day how uh, someone help me out with how you filled in the init method cool said self dot fly equals year self dot f equals month self dot d equals day and what I was saying And I made uh, self.datelist, and that date list is a list with the year, the month, and day. And I use that for all the comparison. 
Um, I think I'll, I'll keep it simple and <laughs> stick to stick to my year month day uh, uh, instance variables. Then we need our wrapper function to turn our date object into a string. And someone else to give me a, a suggestion for how you approach that. Argus? Um, I made a variable called date, and then I did date equals, or date, um, and then date equals str self dot money um, plus, and then backslash, and then plus str self dot day plus backslash again. <coughs> And then STR yep. So we turn our numbers into strings, concatenate them all together. Uh, looks good. Now we have our equals method, which VS Code has. All right. So now. Uh, suggestion on how to proceed with the equals method. Cole? See, if you made a list of all that, you can just enter it to the list to see if you brought the same. What if I didn't have a list? <laughs> um, then you just have to say, you have a series of if, and that's the ifs, I guess. Um, and or you can have to be nested. Um, and just say self dot m or self dot y equals other dot y. And then uh, you know, go on to the next if um, self dot m equals other dot m. Yeah. And, and so on? Yeah. <coughs> Return true. Otherwise, Uh, where like this? Mm. No, no. You, you want to invent the same level of the self dot y. Wait. See, I, I didn't do this. <laughs> uh, any other uh, <laughs> approaches to to our our if our our equal David? Um, I did this, but I just put a else. Uh, return false after every if. I'm not sure if that's the most efficient way, but I think it looks pretty. Yeah, we have a, a sort of has a, has a nice, has a, a nice uh, shape, shape to it redacted. Uh, oh. Um, um, can I say what I did? Yeah, sure. And it's like so we could also kind of do all our checks for year, month, day as part of a single Boolean expression, and we use and, which makes sure that they all have to be true. And then in here, return true, else return false. So it'd be uh, a little shorter way of, of doing the same, the same equals. Uh, one thing that I, I'll point out about this solution here is we say, if this thing is true, return true. Else, when this thing is false, return false. So we can simplify this even further because when this expression is true, we want to return true. When the expression is false, we want to return false. So we can just return this boolean expression that we're using in the if itself because when it's true we want to return true and this will make it return true when it's false we want to return false 
uh, and this will make it return false. So <coughs> this will be the case any time you see code that says if something return true, else return false, you can always just return the thing you're checking in the if directly. All right, then we have our greater than method, which there are many different ways to, to structure this. So uh, I'll just uh, uh, share mine uh, in case uh, it's helpful. So if our year is greater, then this is greater. Uh, if the year is equal, then it might come down to the month. Uh, if our month is greater than the other's month, then we have then then uh, then self is is greater, and then if the months are equal and the day is greater. That's the other way that self could be greater. So this kind of covers all the cases, year greater, year's the same, month greater, year and month the same, day greater. And if none of this ever caused a return, then I can return false. Oh, this all needs to be an indented one. So in this test code I wrote up here, could write this all up. We get uh, things printing out, uh, equals working, greater than, less than. Uh, once we have greater than, less than works automatically because Python is smart enough to say, well, if it's uh, not greater than and not equal, then it must be less than. So we don't actually need to, we could do our 2021, 10, 31, 11, 1, and we could print out d1 less than d2 and less than, need to save it. Oh, need to save it as a .py file. So then it will let me run it. And less than is, is working. Uh, if we want greater than or equal to work, we can take advantage of <coughs> the fact that something is greater than or equal if self is greater than other or self is equal to other because we already imp we already wrote methods for greater than or equal and so we can actually just use those to do greater than or equal all right questions on on anything about this example any part of this code uh, would be helpful to talk more about Brian um, were the greater than method uh, would it be a problem if you had just check the year and then if that's not true it just goes to the month, and then that's like just have three if on if statements. It starts with the year, and then the month, and then the day. So something like uh, this. Yeah. So I think that this wouldn't work in. Uh, the example where we have um, uh, like our our other, let's say, is has a greater year, and so this is false. Um, <coughs> let's switch these around. Okay, so our other has a greater year, so this first one is false, but we have a greater month, and so we'll return true even though, given the year, we're not greater than other. 
So, but wouldn't it? Right, we said d1 greater than d2. It would say true, even though that should not be true. Because after it checks the year, it doesn't check that the, whether the years are equal or not. It just checks are the, is the month greater. But that kind of doesn't take into account all the information we need to. Other questions? All right, so uh, please uh, close your laptops. We're done with uh, code writing uh, for today. And I want to get uh, use our remaining time to get started on a kind of entirely new kind of uh, way of storing data. And I want to start out by making an exclusive a uh, uh, national newsworthy announcement. I will be running for president in 2024, and it's 2021. You say, uh, why? Why start now? And I say, that's that's American politics. Gotta love it. Uh, so, something that I'm going to need for my presidential campaign is a volunteer database. I'm going to need something that um, uh, keeps track of say volunteer <laughs> name and the associated email address. And so uh, this campaign is going to be a big deal, so there's just going to be way too many volunteers for me to write a program that had a separate variable for each volunteer. So today, and, and given the time, continuing on Monday, we're going to look at a way of representing the kind of data where I have, say, a name and some associated piece of data like an email, representing that efficiently. So we might consider the operations, the things that we want to do with our volunteer database. So we want to be able to check Is a volunteer signed up? Is this person in our database? So that would look something like like some variable vol name for volunteer name. Is it in our database? True or false? So this would be our. contains operation. We've seen how this works with, say, lists. We can say element in list, and that will give us true or false is the element in the list. I'm also going to want to be able to update or insert the email for a given volunteer, you know, add volunteers to my database or update their email if it changes. And so uh, I'd want some, um, want some syntax that would be like database, and then I'm not sure, something in brackets equals email. And I also want to be able to Display the email for a given volunteer. That'd be something like print database. Again, a 
accessing it somehow in order to print out the uh, the associated email. <coughs> so it might be good to start by thinking about can we perform operations like these three given things that we already already know about things that we've talked about so I'd like you to take a few minutes and brainstorm with your neighbors using the kind of ways of organizing data that we've already talked about. And perhaps a good candidate would be a list, since we know that's a way to group a bunch of data together. How might we use a list or maybe something else to provide operations like these? If, as I said, we're, we want to keep track of kind of names and associated emails. All right. What uh, any any ideas come up in your in your brainstorming? How what how we might use a, a list or anything else to to do our our name email database? Okay. Could you while well, you're talking about was maybe like a big list and then inside the list you have either a tuple or another list and each of those represents a voter with their name and email? I like it. Like a, a list of our kind of name email tuples that's keeping the, the name and email uh, associated. Um, what would we need? Yeah, Maya? That's that's a, a great point. That if if we had a list of tuples, we can't change them. So if we wanted to make put a different tuple, we'd have to remove the old one and put in a new one. Uh, we could do a list of lists so that they are modifiable. Uh, that would be one way to to get around that. Um, if we wanted to check if a volunteer is is in our list. Uh, how might we write code to, to do that? What would, what's something we that, that might help with that? Emma? Um, an if statement, probably. Saying if volunteer name in database, then return location, maybe? Yeah, we, uh, the, the, uh, it was just kind of have an, have an if statement with kind of checking his volunteer name in the in the database. The challenge here is that the string of the volunteer name does not appear as itself an element of our list, because what's in our list is either tuples or other lists that are the combo of the name and email. So if we yeah, Jonathan, you use like a for loop to go through like the whole list. Yes, exactly. We would need to loop through all the entries in our database to check the name part of each one to see if it matches the name we're looking for. And this is, in fact, what we'll have to do any time we want to get something out of the database because we have no way to know like where in the list to look for a particular name. And so we're always searching through every single volunteer uh, in, in the database, which I assure you will be many volunteers, people will be flocking to Bauer 2024. Uh, it's going to be slow because every time we want to, to update or display or check if something's in there, we have to potentially have a loop go through every single entry. So we could do it with a list, but it's not ideal. It's like not really set up for the sort of behavior that we want. So what is going to come to our rescue is <clears throat> a new type of representing data, or what's called a data structure. A list is one kind of data structure, and a dictionary is another. And it's going to...
consist of a set of key value pairs, like uh, uh, a key, which in this case would be our name, and an associated value, which in this example would be an email. And as we'll talk about on Monday, our dictionary is going to be able to use the key, use our name, to jump, uh, to know exactly where to find the associated value. And it won't have to do any searching through all the entries in our database, and will therefore be potentially much, much faster than our lists of lists approach. So I'll leave you with that cliffhanger. Have a good weekend. Please get started with the lab if you haven't already. Those questions on the form, and I'll see you Monday.